Let's talk about 1 John 5, 7 through 8. As mentioned before in my other video, this is chopped off. There's a certain part that's chopped off in verses 7 through 8. And that's the salient phrase about the Trinity. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Oh, excuse me. The Word. And then we also got the Holy Spirit here. These three are one. Salient, salient phrase. Greatest verse on the Trinity. The greatest verse on all three together. That's why. But the modern Bibles, KJV retains it. Modern Bibles, they subtract it. The reason why is because they argue that manuscript evidence is very weak supporting that. Now, I've disproven that that was a lie. All right, There is much more manuscript evidence than you think. But the thing is this. We don't even have to look at manuscript evidence. We can play in their playground. All you have to do is be a Bible believer. All you have to do is look at the scriptures themselves. And the scriptures themselves is automatically going to debunk their argument that this verse ha that this phrase, yoanin comma, as they called it, they called it yoanin comma, this phrase that it has to be chopped off. So we're going to look at the scriptures themselves. See how it makes sense when you get rid of this phrase, which is called the yoanin comma. Okay, let's see how it sounds like. Scriptures themselves. You like to use Greek? Let's play Greek, all right? Let's play their playground. Let's play Greek with them. Internal Greek evidence. First of all, look at 5, verses 7 through 8, right? Verses 7 through 8. Here's the easiest part. Look at verse 8. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one, correct? All right. So we see right here that at verse 8, we see spirit. Oh, excuse me. I messed up right here. Spirit, water, blood. In Greek, they put that as neuter. They put this as a neuter gender. Okay, spirit, water, and blood. Then the phrase, and these three are one, it's going to be neuter then, right? And these three are one, right? Because spirit, water, and blood is neuter, right? Guess what? And these three are one is masculine gender. So when it talks about these three, it's referring to a masculine gender. These three are one. That doesn't make sense unless you had verse 7 about who? Masculine, masculine. See, if you take out verse 7, then it, it destroys what the masculine gender the author was referring to. So we're playing Greek playground with them. So notice right here that this evidence completely falls apart when we play their Greek game. See, it doesn't make sense. Internal evidence demands it follows logically. You have to put verse 7 right there. Verse 7 right there. Because what else was the author referring to? Another Greek internal evidence. You think that's good enough? Here's another one. Another one, which is another great point, is look at verse 7, all right? Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, in Greek, when you play at their playground in Greek, in verse 7, it has it as these three are one when you translate it. But guess what? When you look at verse 8 in Greek, this is interesting. Verse 8 doesn't go these three are one. You know what it says in Greek? They did something different compared to verse 7. In verse 8, what they did is that they added these three are the one, specifying specifying as if the one is already been mentioned before. Mm, that's right. See that? Why would they specify the one? See, why would they specify the one? Because it's referring to something they mentioned before as the one. This one. These three are one. That's why verse 8 would mention these three are the one. 
It's referring to context of verse 7, what it was talking about before. Verse 7 didn't go the one, you got to understand. But verse 8 did. Because the author was referring to something he talked about before. Look at that. So you'll notice right here, to drop verse 7 would destroy what verse 8 was talking about as the one. Who was he talking about as the one? All of a sudden, you jump from verse 6 and then verse 8, these three are the one. What in the world? What are you talking about? This one, verse 7, because he mentioned that phrase before, these three are one. Let's also look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 9. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. So we see from Greek, we looked at, and by the way, this is only Greek scripture. We only looked at Greek scripture. Now let's go to English KJV scripture. See, scriptures unlock, not just external manuscript evidence, which we saw before, we also saw the Greek Bible, as they claimed the original Greek, their Greek Bible. Okay, so let's call it that way, whatever you want to call it. It's in there. And not only that, the KJV, English KJV. Let's also look at 1 John chapter 5, and then we will read verse 9. Look at this. In verse 9, it says, if we receive the witness of men, so the witness of men is inferior, obviously. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. So obviously the author is making a comparison between, he's making a comparison between, so we will put English KJV right here. That way we can see that this is argument from English KJV. In verse 9, he's trying to make a comparison between the witness of God and the witness of men. That was the whole bottom line. He's trying to make that comparison. But as he makes that comparison, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is a witness of God which he hath testified of his son. Then here's the question. The author by context, when he's talking about the witness of men and witness of God, what, did he, what was he talking about in context? Look at this. This is amazing. We're going to look at verse 7. There's your heavenly witness of God. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There's that one heavenly witness. Now, verse 8, here's your earthly witness. That's man. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. So we obviously know that God up in heaven, he's made up of what? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's the Godhead. One God, three different persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Whereas for us, human being on earth, what are we? Spirit, water, and blood. Now here's the thing, is that now we see these two different witnesses. The witness of man in verse 8, right? and the witness of God, verse 7. Correct? Okay, if that's the comparison that John was talking about, what happens when you drop verse 7? You drop, you drop verse 7 about the witness of God, then what is John talking about at verse 9? The witness of God is greater than the witness of man. What is he comparing it to? See that? You need verse 7 and verse 8. You need both of them. You need them. You need these two so that it can flow in context of what the author, John, that he's trying to make this comparison between that witness of man in verse 8 and the witness of God at verse 7, the witness in heaven, the witness on earth. Which one's greater? The witness of God. You destroy it. So we see that the scriptures itself show it does not make sense when you destroy verse 7. Not only that, here's another thing you got to think about. Now, White, he always says conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. I'm so tired of him saying that. Conspiracy theory, whenever we point out a doctrinal error with modern Bibles. Chew on this one for conspiracy theory. You people watch a lot of stuff online, right? I guarantee you this. You look up 1 John 5, 7 and 8 on YouTube. I promise you this. Guess what? 
You know, KJV only advocates have, o have always argued this verse attacks the Trinity. And by attacking the Trinity, that's what the cultists can take advantage of. Oh, no, that's a, that, they just made that up because it's just a conspiracy theory. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Look up the videos. You know what they did? These cultists use the argument from James White, uh. Dan Wallace, John, Ankel, uh, John Ankelbaum, and th these guys, they used the argument See, look at the fruits of the critical textual critics now. Look at their fruits. It's rotten to the core. Yeah. Helps out cults. There are these videos. If you don't believe me, look at these guys are supposed to be Christians too. Christians. And I know Muslims took full advantage of this too. They use textual critic arguments that the manuscript evidence on this is weak. And that there are, uh, there are hardly any Greek manuscripts supporting this. So this verse talking about the Trinity is gone. That's what they said. So the cultists argued, there's your greatest verse on the Trinity. It's gone. And there's no other verse. They also said that there's no other verse that actually says these three are one. One cultist said that. Boom. Ooh, theory. 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 This is just a conspiracy theory. That's the important, valuable lesson we learn. And let's continually use that textual critic argument and let all those cuts thrive and survive in, use, in borrowing your textual critic argument to destroy a, an important doctrine of the Trinity. And you know what? I bet you after this is uploaded online, some of them are going to tear those videos down or destroy them so that I can't prove it. So I'm going to document those videos and then show it. All right? And it's just one. I know there are so many more out there. Well, it's a very unique verse because it's the only verse that I know of that's ever been in any Bible that had the word three pertaining to God. There are 31,000 verses in the Bible. And none of them had three next to God. None of them do. You know, 67 times the Bible says God is one. And Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So three or two or any other numeral is never used of God. They're, they're not used of God. The only one is one. The NIV, the NASB, the Holman CSB, the NCV, New Century Version, uh, very good translations, and they, they eliminate that verse. And the reason is, uh, the, key, the uh, NIV uh, text notes tell us why this is not in the NIV. Hmm. They say that it is not found in any Greek manuscript before the 16th century. Mm. So that's the 1500s AD. It cannot be found. There are over 5,000 ancient Greek manuscripts testifying to the truth of the New Testament. But it was that verse was an insertion by someone obviously determined to have at least one Trinitarian verse in the Bible. <laughs> they couldn't find it they anywhere else. Find, hey, <laughs> somebody, who in the world would have enough nerve to insert a verse in God's Bible? Mm. But I mean, it's an absolute documented fact, and Trinitarian scholars, the, the best Trinitarian scholars say, and, uh, and Ryrie, uh, Charles Ryrie says it in his basic theology mm. that's used in the schools, the Assemblies of God, a Baptist, Church of God, and he's a, he's a noted scholar. Mm -hmm. And he just says it's not an authentic verse. Mm -hmm. So that's a shocking thing, that someone would, uh, would take uh, it upon themselves to forge a verse that says three in one. I mean, let's read it again. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And that's impacted people's view of God for centuries, you know, since it was inserted that there's three, three in one. You know, there's three distinct, co-equal, co-eternal persons as if heaven is pictured with three thrones. And heaven is never pictured with three thrones. And never, is it? And never, ever. There's one throne of Almighty God and Jesus at his right hand. 
And nobody did his left hand. You know, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. That's what Jesus said. That's what Paul said, that the Father may strengthen you in your inner man by his Spirit, the Father's Spirit. And then God said to, uh, through Joel, Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17, I will pour out of my Spirit. That's the Father's own Spirit. It's the breath of God, the power of God. The Holy Spirit's very real, but the Bible doesn't make the Holy Spirit a third person of God. We're never told to worship the Holy Spirit or pray to the Holy Spirit. It's just not biblical. So, uh, you know, that ha that's led a lot of people astray in their understanding. And, uh, and so let's, let's read it with understanding that uh, this is an insertion. Wow.